What's up, peeps? Today, I'm taking part in the Ugly Duckling Challenge hosted by Corey at Desert DIY. When I saw this table at the thrift store a few weeks ago, I knew it would be the perfect piece for this challenge. It looked just ruined and destroyed enough on the surface to work, but I saw the underlying potential. Welcome to Copper Cactus DIY. I'm Jen, and I'm ready to get this table back to beautiful. But, uh, spoiler alert, mistakes will be made. I'm gonna start out this piece like I do with every piece. I will be cleaning. I'm also gonna try to be, like, pretty gentle with this because the veneer around the edges is really bad. Nothing actually on this piece is good right now. Hence the ugly duck situation but it really looks like it's pretty crappy shape. But like, look at that. Ew. I wiped down every surface with clean water to remove any soap residue, and I recognized that smell right away. So, um, if I've ever said the word ew, this is where it belongs. That's just one time going over this thing with clean water and a rag after soap. That is absolutely tobacco. I can smell it, it's disgusting. And as you can see all along these edges here, there are all of these areas where someone had laid a cigarette down and it burned back and it has actually burned through the top finish. So I'm gonna do my best to do this, but before I do anything else here, we gotta let this piece dry. Okay, this is all super damaged, but I don't wanna like all the veneer blow through the veneer so we're gonna try this oh my god that is so much tobacco dust hold on i gotta get my rest of it okay let's try this again feel free to leave me a comment and suggest a different word than disgusting that you might use to describe this piece because i assure you it's all of them and more <laughs> I'm using my Quinn scraper to start. I do end up switching over to a two and a half inch purdy carbide scraper, but I didn't catch any of that on camera. This thing does a decent job, but the blade does dull pretty quickly, so I had to pause to sharpen quite a bit. Regardless, it definitely worked. It only took me about seven minutes to scrape the first side of this top part, and I vacuumed as I went with this piece because, ew, I do not need this tobacco dust lacquer flying all over my garage. But even though it went quick, I wanted to see if sanding was just as fast. So I grabbed a 120 grit and lightly tested a small patch on the other side of the top. Looks like I got down to the same as the other side. I'll let that dry. Once that dries, I guess I'll see what it looks like underneath. It might just be in my best interest to skip the rest with the scraper um, and actually just do the sandpaper. 
I was waiting for a sandpaper delivery, but I did have a couple of scraps of 120 grit left. I gave it a light sanding and... Seems like that's gonna work, so I'm actually gonna move to the other side and finish off the last little bits with my last little sandpaper. <laughs> When I get my delivery, I'll come back to this side. I got right to work hand sanding everything. Yet again. Peeps, next week, you can be sure I'm taking a break from restorations. Otherwise, I'm not sure my fingers are gonna make it. <laughs> Thankfully though, this finish was so bad, it didn't take more than a couple of hours to sand everything. And I graduated grits from 120 to 180 and finally using a 240 to smooth things out. Then it was time to pull any of the loose veneer around the top and bottom edges. Thankfully, the rest of the piece didn't need any veneer replaced. Remember how I said mistakes were made? Yeah. This is where I begin down the rabbit hole of, quote, I have no freaking clue what I'm doing, end quote. <laughs> I mean, kinda. I've done glue-backed edge banding before, plus I've watched a ton of refinishers doing veneer. So I thought I had a pretty good idea of how to do it, but this wouldn't be one of my videos if it didn't go off the rails somewhere, and this is the somewhere. With loose veneer chunks removed, I turned to doing the same thing with the feet. Removing them, that is. The screws came out easy enough, but the foot was pretty stuck on there. I gave it a little persuasion with my 14-in-1, and it popped no problem. Then I labeled everything so all of the feet would go back together in the correct spot. The main problem here is that I can't actually get this screw out because the wood has like expanded around it over time and the countersink hole here is smaller than the screw head so it's like just not coming out. I'm gonna just have to finish this piece put together. As much as that pains me and not exactly how I wanted to do this, you gotta do what you gotta do sometimes. So you guys can see that I put two screws in here. I left this one loose because I don't have another long enough screw. And I'm sorry I didn't get that on camera, but it was just too hard to actually like get the leverage I needed to get these to push into this outside apron thing with the camera in my way. So here you go. Once everything was secure and back together, I decided to give the Orbital a try on top. The top veneer was a little bit thicker, so I felt okay about starting at a 180 grit. I went really slow, and you can see that all the edges are already done. That's because I did them by hand. The more I could avoid blowing through the veneer, the better, especially on top, but edges are notoriously precarious. In fact, I know this piece was refinished once before. I didn't get it on camera, but when I hand sanded the top apron, there were already places where the edges or corners dulled into the wood beneath. Luckily, this table is just for me, so I don't really mind, but it did kind of ruin my plans for a perfect refinish. I'm not trying to get down to the raw veneer on the bottom, but I at least wanted to remove as much tobacco stained finish as I possibly could. Plus, all those curved areas where the feet live, yeah, they needed a good smoothing out too. I did some of this off camera. Short peeps like me? Yeah, we've got step stools and ladders aplenty. I used the orbital in smooth motions over all the legs. That way I'd avoid flattening out any of the curves. And I made sure to stop before reaching any 90 degree angles so I didn't gouge into the veneer. So I saved you the snooze fest of watching me do all the hand sanding. You're welcome. Instead, let's move on to the part that made me the most nervous about this entire project. Patching the veneer. 
and with good reason. I'm definitely not good at this yet. I bought a variety pack because it offered several options to choose from in the color and the graining, and this table has multiple tones, so I figured I'd find something that would work. After chiseling out a rectangle, I sanded the remaining glue and chunks away. Then I grabbed a few pieces that looked to be the closest in color and grain. This one wasn't exact, but it was better than any of the deeper red options I had, so I measured and cut out the piece. After a dry fit and slight trimming, it seemed to fit in the spot. But here's the thing. This veneer is much thinner than the original, and I forgot to account for the curved base and how I planned to clamp that. So this is how I'm gonna hold it down. That's what I did for the top little edge, or the foot, rather. That's, we're gonna see if that works. It's the best I can do. And then came mistake, I don't know, what, 257 maybe? <laughs> I mixed some of my tight bond with sawdust to create a bit of filler. Yeah, don't do this. The glue deepened the tone significantly, and after this dried, I ended up sanding as much of it out of there as I could because it was way too dark. But I was finally about done and could reattach the feet. They took a little finagling and a bit more sanding off camera, but all three went on level. Maybe the best part of this whole project and ain't nobody ever gonna see it. <laughs> With the glue dry, I could trim down the veneer patches. I'm using a brand new blade on my X-Acto, especially because I'm cutting against the grain, I want to make sure it's as sharp as possible. I used a shim as a straight edge, then I pressed the shim against the excess veneer to bend and snap. I started with an 80 grit to remove the glue, going super gently. This veneer was already much thinner, so I didn't want to take the chance of screwing it up any worse than it already was. Then I moved to a 120 grit. and finally finished everything off with a 240 grit. Now, it might look okay here, but... All right, now let's see how they match up. I'm sure they won't. Yeah, could be worse. No, it couldn't. It's terrible. The closest one I had, though. Well, oh well. Hey, I tried, and at least it's on the back but I wanted to fix it because it also wouldn't be one of my videos if I didn't have to do some faux finishing. I added a top coat first for a couple of reasons. One, so I'd have a smooth, non-porous surface to place the faux. And two, so the final wood tones would come through. That way I could custom mix colors to match exactly. I pulled out the craft acrylics, a bunch of artist brushes, and some custom tinted glaze. And to be honest, I kind of wung it with this one. I tried to get colors a bit lighter and darker, did all kinds of different brush strokes, pouncing and dragging. Plus, I used my fingers and a rag to wipe or blot excess paint. I worked with it until it matched up with the rest, as best as I could. Then I dragged a generous directional glaze over the paint. This wasn't the original plan, but in the end, this technique helped to conceal many of my mistakes. Uh, score! If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe for more furniture restorations, thrift flips, challenges, faux finishing, and furniture makeovers. But that's it for this one. Hang in for the beauty shots and some not-so-ugly ducklings at the end. Thanks so much for watching. Later, peeps!
Thank you.